Beta oxidation is the breakdown of fatty acids into acetyl CoA. Now, the breakdown of fatty acids is not the reverse of the production of fatty acids. So, they happen in two different compartments and by do two different enzyme uh, pathways. Fatty acid synthesis, for example, uh, is one multi, one large multifunctional enzyme, whereas beta oxidation is uh, is uh, Enzyme are, are is done by enzymes that are not associated with each other. It's important to note, especially clinically, that there are three uh, ways to oxidize a fatty acid. So beta oxidation is the primary way that fatty acids are broken down, and um, so the other non-minor way, the minor ways are alpha oxidation and omega oxidation. Now, beta oxidation is primarily in the mitochondria. Whenever you have a very, very long chain or branched fatty acid, it goes into the peroxisome first to be broken down into uh, smaller chains. Now, I know what you learned in your probably in your bio 101 or or undergrad bio class that the peroxisomes are some type of remnant organelles from evolutionary past. That's just not true. They have a very important function in the oxidation of fats. Now, alpha and omega oxidation are really a very, very minor oxidation pathway, but they become very important when there is some type of disease causing uh, beta oxidation to be blocked. So when this is blocked, you get alpha and omega oxidation. Omega oxidation occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum and uh, it produces dicarboxylic acids. So for example if you were to do a urinalysis on somebody and they had a lot of so urinalysis urinalysis and it yielded a high amount of dicarboxylic acids so dicarbs you would conclude from that that uh, there's probably an overutilization of omega oxidation and that could be due to a defect in beta oxidation. Now fatty acid synthesis and degradation two different pathways but they do have a couple of similarities. So what you're seeing over here is coenzyme A. So we've talked a lot about CoA, coenzyme A. It's a very large molecule, actually. And you see, uh, when I, t I said in a previous video that when CoA is by itself, it's usually written as CoASH, and that's because of the thiol group at the end of it. And coenzyme A has this molecule in it. This is pantothenic acid. So pantothenic acid, it's also known as vitamin B5. So on coenzyme A, what this is showing is that we have this pantothenic acid or phosphopantothene group that's on coenzyme A. It's also on an acyl carrier protein. So intermediates, whenever you're synthesizing uh, fatty acids, you will link them to an acyl carrier protein via this phosphopantothene group. And whenever you're degrading them, you'll link them to coenzyme A via this phosphopantothene group. So as we're studying beta oxidation, this coenzyme A is going to be very important. So the steps in fatty acid uh, oxidation, um, the first step is you can't oxidize a fatty acid without attaching it to a coenzyme A. So it gets attached to coenzyme A, uh, creating acyl-CoA. Acyl is the fatty part, and then CoA. And then you Medium, short and medium chained acyl CoA's can be transported directly into the mitochondrial matrix. However, um, long chain fatty acids cannot be transported into the mitochondrial matrix, so they're uh, attached to a carnitine. So the CoA group is taken off and carnitine is added on, so you have this acyl carnitine and it can then be transferred into the mitochondria where it's converted back to where the acyl uh, is reattached to CoA and the carnitine becomes freed up. 
At that point, you have an acyl-CoA inside the mitochondria, and then there's an enzyme. Uh, the enzyme is acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, and there are many of these, and they're chain-linked specific. So you'll have an acyl-CoA dehydrogenase that will act on um, 18 carbon acyl-CoAs or 16 carbon or 14 carbon. So they're chain-linked specific. And what happens is uh, it will create an FADH2 and a transenyl-CoA. The transenyl-CoA is converted to uh, hydroxyacyl-CoA and the hydroxyacyl-CoA to 3-ketoacyl-CoA and from 3-keto to acetyl-CoA. Now you'll remember acetyl-CoA is only two carbons so if we started out with say a 12-carbon fatty acid you'll not, you'll pull off two carbons to produce acetyl-CoA and you'll have a 10 carbon uh, acyl-CoA left. So it's shortened by two carbons each time it goes through the cycle. And every time it goes through it produces an NADH. So you can see down here the step five Step 5 produces NADH and it's inhibited by high concentrations of NADH. Step 6 produces acetyl-CoA and it's inhibited by high acetyl-CoA uh, in that particular mitochondria. Now as I said a minute ago, the step 3, the acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, is chain link specific. So you can have 3 to 6 carbons, which would be acted on by a short chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, or 8 to 12, which would be acted on by a medium chain, and then 12 to 18 by a long chain. Now you remember that uh, pal uh, palmitic acid, so palmitate, is the most abundant fatty acid in our cell and it has 16 carbons so it would be considered a long chain and so it would, you would need a long chain uh, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase to act upon it and all of these um, acyl-CoA dehydrogenases are soluble inside the mitochondria and this very long chain is uh, membrane bound and the reason, so there's some overlap, you can see this is 16 to 18, this is 12 to 18. The reason this is called very long chain is because it's still active all the way up to 24 carbon uh, fatty acids, although it's um, primarily working on 16 to 18. And you can also see over here there's, uh, there's listed deficiency. So the, a deficiency in this particular enzyme is called short chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase deficiency, or SCAD or medium chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase deficiency or long chain and so um, the most common deficiency uh, in beta oxidation is the MCAD deficiency but you can have problems with beta oxidation even before you get to step three because you remember the the first thing you have to do is transport the fatty acid into the mitochondria. So what has so if this is mitochondria right here, this is cytosol, then what happens if you can't get it into the mitochondria? Well then you have a problem with beta oxidation. And this would be something like if your uh, car uh, carnitine palmitoyl transferase one or carnitine palmitoyl transferase two were deficient somehow or not working properly. Or if perhaps the translocase so there's a there's a translocase as well, and we're going to see how all of these three things fit together. So in that same vein, short chain and medium chain fatty acids can travel can uh, go directly into the mitochondrial matrix, but long chain fatty acids cannot. So not only so the fatty acid can't cross, but the fatty acyl CoA can't cross either. So here's kind of the overview. Uh, fatty acids are converted to fatty acyl-CoA by this acyl-CoA synthetase. Then the fatty acid, the fatty acyl-CoA uh, cannot get into the inner mitochondrial space, so it's uh, this carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 will take the fatty acid and add a carnitine to it and take off the CoA so then you get this CoA coming back out here to be reused at this point 
but then you have this acyl carnitine. The acyl carnitine goes through the translocase. This is the acyl carnitine translocase. And then once it's inside the uh, mitochondrial matrix, the another coenzyme A is added to the acyl group and the uh, carnitine is removed and recycled out. So any type of problem with CPT1, CPT2, or translocase would present itself as a beta oxidation deficiency. Now all this is well and good whenever you're talking about breaking down degradation of fatty acids, but what happens in a cell if you're trying to synthesize or build fatty acids? Well, when you're building fatty acids, you get this intermediate called melanyl-CoA. And melanyl-CoA uh, acts on CPT1 and stops it, basically allosterically inhibits it from acting on a fatty acyl-CoA. Now, you might remember, like I said, palmitate is the primary uh, fatty acid produced in biosynthesis, and it's 16 carbons long. And you don't want this six, so you don't want a 12 to 18, specifically a 16 carbon fatty acid being acted upon. And so the easiest way to stop it is just to stop the CPT1. If you didn't stop CPT1, what would happen is you'd be building up fatty acids and breaking them down at the same time, and this would create a feudal cycle. And so in order to prevent the feudal cycle, we have melanyl CoA. Uh, stopping the action of this enzyme. So now, as I mentioned earlier, reaction 3, 4, 5, and 6 are all acted on by uh, enzymes with a specificity for the chain length. So right here we have our um, 1, 2, 3, 4, the first four carbons in our chain, and then the rest of the chain length is represented by the R group. And the reason we're showing these four carbons is to show you basically the chemistry of what happens in beta oxidation. So the first thing is the there's a double bond created between uh, carbons three and four, and that's the transenyl CoA. And you'll remember from organic chemistry that the removal of a hydrogen uh, is called oxidation. And then we have a hydration event. So that double bond is broken by adding hydrogen across the double, or adding water across the double bond. So H and OH are added. And then you get another oxidation event where the hydrogen is pulled off of the alcohol and off of the adjacent hydrogen, off of the carbon. And so you get another double bond formed to oxygen. So now we have these two double bonded. Uh, double bonds to oxygen um, and then as the last step is thiolase its cleavage so what happens is another acetyl CoA comes in and binds to this carbon and these two carbons are broken off and so you get an, an acetyl CoA and an acyl CoA now this acyl CoA is two carbons shorter than the acyl CoA that we started with now the acetyl CoA can go into the TCA cycle or several other things can happen to it and all of these reducing equivalents that we got along the way can go into the electron transport chain.